This is the first in a series of how-to videos on DAP. In this video, I'll be addressing what is DAP, why is it helpful, why should someone want to use it, and then finally giving a quick demo on creating your first live preview ready app. So first off, what is DAP? Well, DAP is an iOS app for any Apple iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch device, and basically an app to help make an app, as it allows you to set the structure and key elements on the device itself without code. So why is it helpful? Well, it's a graphical way to set up an app, and it really helps you avoid writing lines and lines of code. So why should someone want to use it? Well, it's really for people who don't have a complete grasp on Objective-C, which is the coding language that Apple requires for its devices. And really, it lets you do more in less time because it allows you to take a project that would normally take an hour in code and bring it down to about 5 to 10 minutes. And that's exactly what we're about to do. Just before we get started, my version of DAP is version 1.2.3. So that's what I'm going to be basing my tutorial on. Alright, let's get started. Start by launching DAP. And if you're using an iPad like I am, I recommend maximizing the app by clicking the two times button in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is create a new design. To do this, click designs and then edit. If you've got more designs like I do, scroll down to the bottom and hit add new design. Here we can get the title and author of our new app. So for the purposes of this demonstration, let's just call this my first app. And then for now we can leave author blank, but if you're actually making an app, you would either put the name of the company or your name if you're your own company. So let's hit done, because at any time if we don't hit done, DAP won't save our changes. That's very important. Hit done again. And now let's find our app. Here it is. Okay, this is our home screen of the app, and that's what I'm going to be referring to it as. What you're basically seeing here is all the pages of your app. Right now there's only one untitled page, so let's fix that. Click the Untitled page, and here you get to see all the objects on that page. For right now, let's go to Page Options in the bottom right hand corner, because I want to change this from Untitled page to Page 1. Here you get to see all the specific information for this page. Right now, click Title, and then the X next to all the text. Okay, let's title this Page 1, and hit Done. If you hit Untitled Page in the top left, it'll bring you back to the main page. Hit Done, and now you've renamed that page. Okay, if we go back to my first app, now at the home screen again, we can do more with this. Okay, from here, let's touch Page 1, and then instead of Page Options, let's hit View Mode. Now the View Mode is what you'd actually see if you loaded up your app right now. So, as you can see, it's kind of boring because you haven't added anything. So let's fix that by double clicking the screen. And as you can see, the main controls slide down. Right now, only the top three are highlighted, so let's choose new object. From this list, you get to pick whatever you'd like to add to your page. For now, let's just add a label and hit done. You could add a name at this point, but that's unnecessary. The only reason you would need that is for detailed organization in your app. And for this explanation, we don't need to do that. Hit done. Okay. Now you can see that new label has spawned in the top left hand corner. And you can drag it around and resize it using the handles that appear. But for right now, let's just make it about that big and center it. Centering it is whenever it turns green. So now I know that's centered. Okay, if I double click the icon, the same controls come up except all of them are highlighted. Let's hit edit object. Here you get to edit all the attributes for the specific object. Right now what we want to do is change the text from new label to page 1 because this will help us identify the page while we're running the app. Hit done and then back. There you go. Now you have a label that says page 1 but the text is kind of bland and it's very tiny so let's double click it, hit edit object again and go down to text. Here let's change the font name to something like marker felt thin. And let's change the font size to say 24.
Okay. Now, as you can see, it says that our label is centered, but the text itself isn't centered. Instead of centering the text through the design, we could just resize the label and center the label itself. Great. Now, we want to do something with this app, because what's the use of an app if all you could see is a label that says page 1? So double click the background, hit new object, and let's get a button in this. Okay, as you can see, new button has spawned in the same spot that label had spawned. So let's drag it around and resize it to something about there. Let's enter this, double click it, we could hit edit object, and change the attributes of this button in the same way that you would have with the label. First off, let's change the title to change page. Hit done. And other than that, there's things like the type of button, the color, if you wanted to change the font color, and then if you wanted to add a background image to your button. For now, we can leave this because we don't really want to change anything in this explanation. So hit back, and there you go. Here's page one of your app. Now, we have a button now that says change page, but we don't have a second page for it to change to. So let's double click the background and hit done. If we hit done again, and back to my first app at the home page, we can add another page. To do this, hit edit and add new page. Here let's type the title of the new page as page 2. Okay, let's go into page 2 the same way we did with page 1 and hit view mode. Alright, so now you know how to enter a new label. Let's drag another one in. Let's bring it to about where it was on the other page and change the text and font just like we did. This time, we'll call it page 2. Hit done. And then let's go down and change the font. Let's try something different this time, like Trebuchet MS. And the font size, let's bring it up to about 28 this time. You can even get more precise with points, but for now, 28 should be good. Hit done. And back. There you go. Let's resize the label and center it just as we did with the first page. Double tap the background and hit done. Done and back to my first app. Okay, so now that we have our two pages and the button that's linking them, we have to tell that button to actually move to the second page. So go back to page one and here instead of going to view mode you could just touch the button because these are all the objects on that page. Let's go down to Actions, because this is what's actually telling it to change page. Hit Action Type, and add a push. Push will let you change pages with a button. Hit Done, and then you see Target and Animated have appeared. Right now we could change Target to Page 2, hit Done, and back to Page 1. We can also go back to My First App. Okay. Now that we have our button that's pushing to page 2, and a label on both pages, we could do a first test run of our app. To do this, from the main page, hit design option, and then live preview. Now this is the same thing that you would see as, as if you had loaded your app onto your device. And it's a great feature that DAP has for developers. It allows you to fully test your app before you even touch code. So as you can see, we have our label, and we have the change page button. Let's see what happens when we touch the button. As you can see, we switched over to page two seamlessly. All right, let's make it a little clearer that we've changed pages by adding some color to these pages. Double click at any time to go back to the exit life preview bar and hit okay. Hit back to my first app, and let's go into page one. From here, we can go to page options again. Okay, let's change the background color. For this one, we can do Group Table View Background. Hit Done, back to page 1, and back to the home page. Now let's click page 2, Page Options, and let's change the background color to something like orange. Done, back, 
and back again. All right, now we have both pages with color, text, a label, and a button. Let's test our final app. Design options, live preview. As you can see, all the colors go into the background. Now let's see if it changes pages. Click the button, and there you go. It brought you to page two with your label and the color that you selected. And that's it, a fully usable app that you created in just a few minutes. As you can tell, this was a pretty quick explanation, and there's a lot more that you could do with DAP. And I recommend experimenting. That's probably the best thing that you could do, is just trying new things. And that's what really helped me when I first got DAP. And once you get used to it, you'll find that there's some really good things that you could do without even touching code. So that's it for now. I hope this video helps you out, and good luck on your development process. Even though it may seem overwhelming, once you find tools like DAP, you'll soon understand how manageable it really is.